بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أصيب ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلم تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبارك على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجمين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد The last ten days of the month of Ramadan where we have to intensify our commitment and our worshipping and the journey of friendship and companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this life, the believer has three types of relationships. It is a three-dimensional relationship. It is like a triangle where the top end of the triangle is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bottom end on one side is himself and the other side are the, are the people around him. All these three relationships need to be worked out. Need to be worked out and need to be developed. First is the relationship with his Lord. Where do we stand? We have to ask during these, the last 10 days of Ramadan. Where do we stand on this relationship? What is the distance between me and my Lord? And we can discover the distance ourselves. We can feel it. One of the ways of measuring the level of faith and commitment to God is at the time of sins if you want to to know your relationship how is your relationship with god examine yourself at the time of sin sinning if the power of resistance is great the power of resisting the sin is great then your distance is also great the distance is very close with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we have to work at. The relationship with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be the focal point of our life. This is number one. The hadith says, Man aslaha fi ma baynahu wa bayna Allah, aslaha Allah fi ma baynahu wa bayna if you take care of this relationship between you and God, God is going to take care of your relationship with people. 
أمر آخرته أصلح الله له أمر الدنيا. If you take care of your affairs of the آخر, you are concerned about them. You prepare for them. أصلح الله له أمر الدنيا. The worldly affairs in this life, Allah is going to take care of them. Allah says, put your focus like the father, like the mother, who say to their children, you focus on your school, on your studies, we will take care of your life. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your expenses. We want you to focus on your school, on your future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, focus on the akhirah, I will take care of your dunya. Don't worry a lot about the dunya. We always worry about the dunya. Our main concern in this dunya is the sustenance, the risk. How can I protect my family, myself? How can I make money? How can I live longer? These are our concerns. Allah says, don't put this as your concern. I am there. I will take care of you. Think about the Akhirah. This life is short-lived. This life is short-lived. You're going to pass it through this life. Don't make this life your focal point. Concentrate on the next chapter of your life. On a chapter that has no end. An endless chapter. That one has to be your concern, not this life. وَمَنْ أَصْلَحَ أَمْرَ آخِرَتَهُ أَصْلَحَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَمْرَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ وَاعِضٌ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَافِظٌ You want to be protected? There is a good way of protecting yourself. A protection by God. That's the best, best type of protection. When you keep reminding yourself, وَمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ وَاعِظٌ We have to keep reminding ourselves. We have to keep telling ourselves what is right and what is wrong. We have to keep advising ourselves. If we advise ourselves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect us against deviations, against dangers. That is the first part of this relationship. The second part is yourself. I mentioned last night, Laylatul Qadr here, is that the most important thing in this universe is yourself, your soul. To work on your soul, to train your soul, your nafs, to control your, yourself. The reason why we fast for 30 days is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's mentioned. Why do we fast? There is a goal. There is an objective for that. There should be some result. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And تَتَّقُونَ here, the meaning of تَتَّقُونَ is self-control. You attain self-control. You are able to watch what you say, what you do, your behavior, your relationship. This is the second area where we have to work at. Our relationship. Ourselves. And then, Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Man tasawa yawmahu fahwa maqoon. Do not let your two days be equal, equal in achievement. Don't. Every day is an opportunity for us. Every day is a day of growth and development and maturity. Philosophers say in this universe there is the microcosm and macrocosm. Microcosm is me and you, human beings. But the macrocosm is this universe. This universe is developing, growing, day by day. Hour by hour, this universe is growing and expanding. We have to do the same also. Human beings also have to grow. We are growing, we are becoming older day by day. 
And we have to grow also spiritually and mentally and religiously and ethically. We have to grow. When you look at your age, there should be a difference between this year and last year. This year, in terms of conduct, in terms of akhlaq, manners, relationships, has to be better than last year. And next year has to be better than this year. And tasawa yawmahu fahu maqbun. If your two days are equal, then you had you had done nothing to yourself. If if your yesterday was better than today, last year was better than this year, then you are a real loser. Man'oon is someone who did not receive God's mercy and God's blessing. That's the second area. So the first area is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is ourselves. And third is the people around us. We are fathers, we are mothers, we are family members. Every Muslim, I say to those who fast, those who don't want to fast, don't want to pray, they don't know God, I can't address them, I have no access to them. But those who fast, those who recite the Quran, some of you recite the Quran once, whole cycle during the month of Ramadan, some of you twice, some of you three times, those who read the dua during the nights of Ramadan, they have to realize that they have a bigger responsibility than others. A believer has a bigger responsibility in this life than non-believers. Why? Because you are connected to Allah. You are connected to the source of guidance. You are connected to the source of love, to the source of compassion, to the source of forgiveness. Therefore, you have to be the jewel in your family. If you are 10 people in your family, 10 brothers and sisters, you have to be the best among them. The best does not mean that you are the more, you know, most handsome, although alhamdulillah, all of you are handsome. I don't mean economically you are the best. I mean morally and ethically and Islamically and religiously and socially, you are the best in the family. The mu'min is the one who is the jewel of his family. The jewel of his family and his manners. So you have to be the bridge builder. Bridge builder in your family. If two people in your family, they don't talk to each other, you have to be the ambassador. Ambassador of peace. Reach out to them. Don't say I'm busy with my life. This is none of my business. Let someone else do that. You are doing the dua. You are doing the Quran. You are performing the salat, the fasting. So we have to see the result in your life, in your practical life. What's the point of all those tahajjud and dua if my akhlaq is the same or similar to someone who does not know God? What's the point? So you have to reach to others. Your family should be the strongest family in the community. The healthiest family in the community. Your children should be the best. Your husband should be the best. Your wife should be the best. Because of you, you can make a difference. My friends, we are the ones who can make a difference in this life. Not these buildings. We, the humans, when you carry human heart, there is nothing similar to your heart. Nothing similar, nothing more sacred, more important in the eyes of Allah than your heart. لا تسعني أرضي وسمائي ولكن يسعني قلب عبدي المؤمن Somewhere that God chose to live in. Your heart. He's living in your heart. So that heart has to be a functioning heart. A heart that reaches out to others and build peace and compassion and forgiveness. How many times we asked Allah last night during the nights of Qadr and also the last 10 days of Ramadan to forgive us. Oh Allah, forgive me. I did this, I did that. Please forgive me. 
Shouldn't I be a forgiving person too? I have to forgive also. But if I keep the grudge in my heart and, and the hate against this person and that person and that person and this family, then God is not going to listen. God says, listen to me, I would listen to you. You need my forgiveness? You need my forgiveness? I will give you my forgiveness. You have to be forgiving too. You have to be forgiving too. These th three relationships, we have to work on them. We have another, other nights of prayer coming. The night of, it could be the 23rd, which is Saturday, the 25th, the 27th. The odd nights in the month of Ramadan, the last ten days of Ramadan, any one of them could be Laylatul Qadr. The night of destiny. The night that determines our destiny, our fate, our journey, our happiness in this life. Let's go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back to Allah. These ten nights, don't miss, miss out on these ten nights. There are a lot of grants and blessings Allah will offer. So you have to be smart. You have to be smart to be able to get them, to receive them. It depends on you. It depends on your effort, on your sincere effort. فَادْعُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ بِنِيَّاتٍ صَادِقَ وَقُلُوبٍ طَاهِرٍ What is required here? Two main things. بِنِيَّاتٍ صَادِقَ Our intentions has to be true and honest. وَقُلُوبٍ طَاهِرَ And the heart has to be cleansed and clean when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين